Hey everyone, welcome to the Final Cut. Mark the Movie Man here. We're going to dive right in today with Total Recall. Yes, the remake of the Paul Verhoeven 90s classic starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Though this time around in our new version, we have Colin Farrell as Douglas Quaid, who plays a guy with a common man and common life and a beautiful wife, but he's looking for doing something more. He really wants to do something that makes a difference, but he can't do that in the mundane life that he has. Well, enter Recall, which promises to give you life-like uh, experiences from the safety of your mind and they give you the memories and such of an alternate life where you could be from a superhero to a super spy. Well, once Douglas Quaid goes there, he ends up uh, having things go awry and not quite like he planned and pretty soon has him questioning who he is. Is he Douglas Quaid or super spy Hauser, who could be working for the United Federation of Britain to try to bring down the resistance or could be working for the resistance trying to bring down the Federation. So we see the film as he's pursued by one side and sought after by the other side and see him how he tries to choose which role, which side he's in, and how he should proceed from there. Folks, this is a fun remake, a better remake than I thought it would be, okay? When I heard that they were going to do the Total Recall remake, I'm like, oh, come on, really, seriously? Then they said, well, Colin Farrell, Kate Beckinsale, and Jessica Biel are in it. Well, I'm like, okay, well, now you're bringing some legitimacy. And then I heard they are going to put the three rest of women scene in there, and I'm like, okay, they're really trying hard to make a decent remake, and they have done that, in my opinion, folks. Production design is great. You would think in the new millennium we would have more sci-fi movies that aren't comic book sci-fi. I mean, just true sci-fi films, but we haven't gotten a lot of those, but now we have in Total Recall. It is one of those films that really provides a futuristic culture and environment. You don't just get uh, futuristic sci-fi scenes for where the action is. You get this whole culture and environment that they've built around the characters, which really has a, a true sci-fi film feel, a natural feel for the world that they've painted, and it was just visually great. What was also great is that the way they designed the buildings and everything, it almost fit the similar style that you saw in Blade Runner as far as how things were cramped and everything. So I really love the production design, the technology, all the special effects they put in there. Really well done and give this um, immersive world that you buy that the characters are in, okay? So it's not just a world in there for flashiness. It, it, it actually, they like built this world and then put the characters in it rather than putting the characters in just this little few scenes. So they did really well in that. Performances are great all around. I mean, Kate, ba Kate Beckinsale plays a role of Laurie Quaid, uh, Douglas's wife. And in, in the original, Sharon Stone played it, very small role. This one, expanded role, which gives Kate Beckinsale to show just how much of a badass she can be, and we are grateful for it. She kicks ass in every scene and is a lot of fun to watch. Who also kicks some ass is Jessica Biel, who does hold her own uh, when she does finally get into the fight with Beckinsale. Yes, we get some Beal on Beckinsale action, folks, though I would have liked to see a lot more because the action scenes that they were in were pretty badass and a lot of fun to watch, and you could tell they weren't holding anything back, okay? Okay, it, it, it just in general, those scenes are really great, and those elements are really great. They also give some odes to the original 90s film. They give a little modern spin on the scenes, but it was great to see them give those odes. So uh, it, it was top-notch, and I was glad that they put those in there as well. Now about the a couple of weak points in it, though, is, well, one, you get that whole action you know, hero shooting machine guns at the action hero and the bullets miss him most of the time. Well, this one, there's a few scenes where that's really extremely evident to where, you know, these guys are supposed to be kind of robot-type cops shooting at Hauser, and they are really bad shots. So there's a few of those moments that took away from it. The main part that I had a problem with was the fact that they kind of build up to the end in the main main boss fight, if you will, the fight scene between Hauser and the main bad guy, made you wonder why he was fighting that guy, or why that guy would even be there. Considering how they set up this guy, it makes you wonder why they have him being the final boss guy that our hero takes on. And that part, I think, was the weakest part of the film, especially was the build-up to that going, really? Him? Well, you know, so that part really kind of threw me off near the end and took away a little bit from it, but not completely from the experience. I did enjoy this sci-fi film. It was great to see on a big screen. I gave it three and a half stubs on the whole. The weak points uh, are things that, uh, for the most part, can be looked over, except for the ending. Would have gave it four had the ending been more solid, but three and a half, still a solid film and made me feel I did not waste my money or my time, and it is a decent uh, remake, which doesn't insult the the original film but yet gives a nice modern spin on it and it was refreshing to watch sci-fi on the big screen.
And that'll about do it for us here in this final cut. Till next time, folks, keep that ticket stuff.